1972, I had been dating the woman who would be my future wife for about nine months. During that time, our dates had included attending movies, plays, concerts, college football games, and college basketball games. My wife wasn't a huge sports fan, but liked to attend all types of events. Many times she found the people we interacted with more interesting or amusing than the sporting event itself, but she always seemed to have a good time. On April 29, 1972, there was a professional wrestling event at the Hammond Civic Center in Hammond, Indiana, a suburb of Chicago. The double main event, no disqualification, chain matches where each wrestler had one of their legs locked to the end of a chain. Main event number one was Dick the Bruiser versus Black Jack Mulligan. Main event number two was Bobby Heenan, the manager of the Black Jacks, versus Billy Red Cloud. Although I had not attended a wrestling event for several years, this had gotten a big buildup on TV and looked like it would be interesting, so I asked my future wife to go with me. I didn't think about it at the time, but the Hammond Civic Center was near the elementary school where my future wife was a second grade teacher. I'm not sure I told her what to expect at the event. Uh, there were three preliminary matches prior to the two main events, which didn't get too much heat and were pretty straightforward. However, in the first main event, Bobby Heenan helped Blackjack Lonza switch places with Blackjack Mulligan by pulling off his boot, switching the chain, which allowed the Blackjacks to beat Dick the Bruiser. And this got uh, a tremendous amount of heat. Then in the second main event, Bobby got a lot more heat and did several more things to arouse the crowd. And the crowd really got into it. And finally, the fans started chanting, we want blood, we want blood. At this point, my future wife got very nervous that she's never seen a crowd get this agitated, and I probably didn't at the time know how concerned she was because I was enjoying the event. However, Billy Red Cloud proceeded to really destroy Bobby Heenan, and Bobby ended up a bloody mess, so the fans went home happy. I was surprised as it, in the dozen or so wrestling matches that I had attended over the years, I'd never seen that much heat. My date was really shocked at how aroused the crowd became not at all comfortable in that setting. To make matters worse, when she went to work the following week, several of the students at her grade school had been at the wrestling event and saw her there. The students thought it was really great that she apparently liked professional wrestling and was there. However, she was embarrassed that she did not think it was something that she should be associated with. It did not affect our relationship as I proposed two months later and we were married seven months after that. So this is actually a two-parter from a wrestling grandpa, not necessarily the wrestling grandpa, a wrestling grandpa. And I'm gonna stop it right here and interject because the first part of the story, so much fun, <laughs> courting a lady back in the day at the old Hammond Civic Center, a place I'm very familiar with, right down the street from me actually. I remember in particular inviting my friend Sam, who's a dentist, his brother Jeremy is a chiropractor, and he brought his now wife, then just girlfriend, to a Ring of Honor show that I did in Chicago at the Windy City Fieldhouse in Humboldt Park. It was a hip area at the time, just seemed like a regular wrestling show. Well, I wrestled Jimmy Jacobs in a Chicago street fight, and I bled absolutely everywhere. <laughs> Of course, the wrestling fans loved it, but did my chiropractor who was on a date with his girlfriend love it? I'm always a little embarrassed, kind of, when I see them. Not him, he gets the idea, but her, just because I'm sure she had no clue what she was getting into. And she's a doctor, he's a chiropractor. I think they're a little classier, if you will. <laughs> so when I took the scissors out of the turnbuckle that Jimmy Jacobs had tried to stab me with and stabbed him with them, Maybe it wasn't her scene, but they're still together, 
and you found the love of your life, willing willing to accept your love of professional wrestling and all that comes with it. There is another part to this, and we'll start playing it now. Obviously, I never asked her to go to another wrestling event, and kiddingly, she would tell the story to our three children of the night at that wrestling event. When our son was about 10, he became interested in wrestling. My wife had no objection to my son and I attend wrestling events. From that time until he went to college, we attended a number of WWE and WCW uh, live events in Chicago area, including SummerSlam 94 and WrestleMania 15. Unfortunately, my wife got cancer and passed away 14 years ago. We were married for 35 years, had a great marriage, and I have three wonderful children. Since then, my children have encouraged me to do the things that make me happy. More specifically, my son told me that since I enjoy wrestling, I should attend WrestleMania. I have attended WrestleMania 32, 33, 34, and 35. Each time, I had a great time. I also discovered WrestleCon when I went to WrestleMania 33 and visited it as well. Highlighting my visit to WrestleCon was meeting Bobby Heenan. At this time, Bobby was not in good health with, I believe, throat cancer and was extremely difficult to understand. I told him the story of attending his match at the Hammond Civic Center. He was amused, seemed to really like hearing about our experience. He immediately turned around and told his wife about that event many years earlier who seemed to better understand his speech at that time. He really seemed happy that I'd come by and autographed a photo, which I still have. So that was one call, one nice long call, and really had two very different stories within one giant story. And that's and this is great. He told a whole narrative from the beginning to the end, a perfect call. And I talked about the first half with his wife going to the wrestling show And here's the second half, being widowed and the encouragement of his kids to do what you love at any age. I think this is a great lesson to tell and to learn, hopefully for some. And I love that for you. And I've done so many conventions and signed so many autographs over the years. And it's wild to think about the things that stick with me because I remember this exact WrestleCon. Outside in New Orleans, it was one of the first big WrestleCons that High Spots went for. I was like one of 20 wrestlers there. I made so much money that weekend. Now there's like 150 and the money is very dispersed. But that specific one, it was so awesome. My movie had just came out. I was hustling so hard. I also not only remember Bobby Heenan being there, I remember the exact spot he was in. I remember the way he talked. I remember his wife being there. And this caller, I also vividly remember being blown away. And I I hope you don't take offense to this, but at these conventions, there's a certain demographic. And you were just this sweet, nice, older gentleman. And I know it's not fair to judge and just be like, what the fuck is this guy doing here? But to hear you praise me, And tell me that you listen to my podcast. And then me picturing the people that listen to my podcast. And then seeing you and picturing you listen to my podcast brought me so much joy. That's me personally. That's what you did for me. But what you've done here for many is told a great story, painted a great picture. We're all apologetic and sorry what happened to your wife. But I love that you keep living your life, that you keep moving forward. The relationship you have with your sons, the relationship your sons have with you And the idea that you said to yourself, I love wrestling. Why would I stop loving wrestling? And you continue supporting and making wrestling a part of your life. For that, you're appreciated. Hey, thanks for watching. That call was part of a whole podcast called Wrestling Anonymous. Listen to the whole thing weekly. Wherever you listen to your podcast, go subscribe. While you're at it, subscribe right here on YouTube to Colt Cabana's channel. Thank you.